want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Yes. I want to talk to y'all from the subject of the recipe. The recipe. Come on, sir. The recipe. The recipe. Oh, okay, good. Well, see, growing up as a child, you know, my, my in order for some folks to want to eat your food, uh, your recipe has to be made. Come on, yeah. it gotta be, <laughs> gotta be. Your That's recipe had to be bad. Now you didn't go to grandma's house because she cooked halfway good chicken. You didn't go to grandma's house because she cooked halfway good pancakes and waffles. You went over there because grandma's house was bad. Come on, yeah. When my went over my grandma's house, every time I went over there, got every morning, my grandma would know her mama. So if I say mama. My mama used to always cook whatever you wanted. You yeah. wanted butter pancakes, she got you. You wanted butter blueberry pancakes, she got you. Mm -hmm. And we got this place in New Jersey called Gilchrist that makes the bangin'. Mm -hmm. The bangin'. I'm talking about the I best taste of snack your mama kind of pancake that you Ooh. ever want to taste on this side of heaven. But boy, but grandma, yeah. well, put some on. maple syrup up in that baby. Yeah, I got it. I'm talking about the original maple syrup, not that Aunt your Mama kind, not the one you get from Pathmark. I see y'all down here got uh, 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 Publix, and, yeah. and when I was younger, I remember picking the Wiggly and Wendy Dixie when I was a kid. So you know, so I wasn't gonna say that with Kroger and stuff like that. But 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 my grandma didn't have it. She went and got this big old jar. It looked like a little jug, and it was syrup up in there, and that syrup made that pancake even more delicious. And I was so my stuff in it because of the recipe that my grandmother oh my had inside made me want to eat yeah. the pancakes. Well, mm -hmm. And I always tried to mimic my grandpa. You know, my grandmother always made this thing called a uh, pound cake. Uh, when she made the pound cake, I always wanted to wonder why why was the pound cake so moist and so soft mm -hmm. that you didn't need no icing on top of it. Yeah, yeah. It's because of the recipe my grandmother had. It, it made me want to eat more of the cake that I should not be eating. Yeah. Well, Come on, so when I sat there and I was like, Grandma, I was like, Mama, how did you make this cake so good? She said, it's all in the recipe, baby. It's all in the recipe. She said, I, I, I take the regular mix, but she said, I put some pudding in it. God, yes. Come on. I said, what? That's it? She said, yeah, baby. She said, because it gives it this moistness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, y'all probably wondering why I'm talking about a recipe. In order for people to eat what you're giving, you've got to have a good recipe. Lord! Because nobody gonna eat no nasty pancakes. Yeah, come on, son. Because if you ever go to a restaurant and you eat their fried chicken, I can guarantee you, if it don't take the best, you gonna sit there like I will never come here again. Yeah. Right? And we're wondering why the church house is so empty. Huh? It's because Ooh. pastors don't have the right recipe. Because everybody got an agenda when they preach. Yes, yes. You got to ask yourself the question as a pastor, what is my agenda? My agenda, one, as a pastor should be, is the people. The people. Mm -hmm. And the other part of the agenda is my, 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 as a pastor, is you ought to be Christ agenda. What I mean by that is that your agenda be like to see soul saved to come to Christ. Yeah. I don't care if I'm not rich, but as long as I'm doing what God has called Jesus. me to do. He said after they dined on the, on the island, what happened? He pulled Peter aside. And when he pulled Peter aside, he said, Peter, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah. This is the same Peter who said to saw Jesus after he got finished praying and said to Jesus, Jesus, bid, bid me to walk on the water that you're walking on. And, and he told him to come. And it was Peter who stepped out from the rest of the, the 11 and said, I'm going to walk like he's walking. Yeah. Come on. Yes. 
It was Peter that ran to the tomb when Jesus died and got pushed out of the way by another disciple. Yes. It was Peter that was on the mountain of transfiguration. It was Peter that was in the room when Jairus' daughter died and Jesus said, Takumi Fatu, Dazzle arrived. It was Peter that he had with him. Whenever Jesus went somewhere, he had three people he could depend on. It was Peter, James, and John. Is there anybody in here that got a ministry of Peter? Yes. Somebody that you know that can help you feed the sheep. Yeah. You always need somebody because then there's a chef, there's always a soup chef. Yeah. Yes. 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 Jesus knew how to cook because when they saw him on the island, what they do? They saw him out there, they got finished fish. They saw a person out there having a fish fry. All right. Woo -woo. See, y'all quiet because some people don't know the text. Let me, let me help you out with the text. What happened was they were out on the boat and they were fishing because these were the scared people. They were scared after Jesus died and Jesus went around. This was Jesus' third appearance all to some people. This was Jesus. He appeared to them after he got finished. He went to them because they were hiding. They were scared. Yeah. These were the people that were hiding because they were scared. Let me, read that, read, let me repeat that for you again. These were the men that were hiding when they were scared. All... Ten of them were hiding when they were scared because I say ten because one was not there and the other one committed suicide. Uh -huh. So when there was one, one that was not there, I thought I called him like to call him brave man, huh? But he wasn't there. Peter was hiding, and the rest of the disciples were hiding in the house, and Jesus walked through the wall mm -hmm. and God. showed himself. He said, Be not afraid. It is I. Uh -huh. But then he looked around and he said, Where's Thomas? Huh? Because Thomas wasn't in the house because he wasn't scared. No, I can tell you that Thomas wasn't scared because this was the same Thomas right before they got the news uh, uh, that, um, that uh, well, um, 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 I forgot the man's name. Lazarus was dead. <laughs> Thank you, baby. When Lazarus was dead, this was the same man who sat there and said, let's go over there and find him. Let's go over there and get him. But the other disciples were talking about, don't go over there because they want to kill you. But it was Thomas. Who wanted to fight? Didn't care if he had to die. He said, I'll die with you, Jesus. Yeah. My God from his eyes. Is there anybody else that has some people that are willing to die and go where God called you to go? Let me help you out with something. Peter was in the house scared. Uh -huh. And while they was in there scared, Thomas wasn't there. That was the first appearance. Second appearance is when, when Thomas was in the house with them. Then Jesus came a second time. The third appearance is when they saw him on the boat, yeah. off on the boat. And when they saw him standing there, they was like, who is he? Who is this man? But then they got closer, and Peter knew who it was, and he jumped out and ran to him. Yeah, Could I help you out with something? Jesus was feeding them, and after that, he pulled him aside. Yeah. Have you ever been pulled to the side by God? My God. Yeah. yeah. He pulled him to a side. The reason why he pulled him aside because he had to get him away from people yeah. to pour into him what was left out of him. You better yeah. teach back yeah. to him. Come on. Y'all didn't get that yet. Let Come me be honest. Jesus. You got to realize that Peter has some scary things in his time. This was the same Peter that sat at the table and said, Jesus, I won't deny you, brother. Man. I'll be with you. But denied him three times in the crop crew. That's right. My God. Peter. Lying Peter. Uh-oh. Lying Peter. But also weapon carrying Peter. Yes. 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 yes, indeed. Peter will cut you in a minute. You got some Peters in your ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Y'all don't want to hear about that. Y'all don't want to hear about that. You got some y'all got some Peters in your ministry. Come on. You know some people that's ready to pack in the moment that Pastor, I got your back. Yeah. That's it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I don't need no Peter now. <laughs> don't need no because they shoot on, on jump shoot. <laughs> I don't need no Peter now. I got the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. But yeah. now just that this is the third time that they saw Jesus. Now Jesus is sitting up on the island and they sit there and see him. He pulls Peter aside and he says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Jesus. Now why would Jesus ask the question that he already knows the answer to? Yeah. Come on, preacher. Whenever Jesus asks us a question, he wants not to see where you sit with him. Is what it is, is he wants to make sure that you are sitting where you need to be sitting yeah. because he's about to confirm some stuff on the inside of you. Yeah. He asked him three times. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yeah, feed my lambs. Now, the question is, why did he start with the babies first? Come on, preacher. Yeah. Because the baby lamb 
is nothing but when a male ram and an eel come together. Yes. Now let me have you out. The eel is what they call the female lamb. Mm -hmm. And the ram is what they call the male lamb. But when and they, the male sheep, but when they come together, they create a lamb. Because that's what they call it, the, the name thing. Now there's a significance why Jesus had to tell them, feed my lamb. Because when you start a church and when you start building, you're going to have a lot of lambs coming through. You're going to have a lot of babies coming through. Yes. And there's something about baby lambs that you got to be careful with. Baby lambs, yeah. bah, they, they stray quicker than regular lambs. Yeah. Come on, preacher. Because they got to learn your voice. Yes. Yeah. With lambs, you got to be more attentive to. Come on. With lambs, you got to be more yeah. hands on yeah. with. Yeah. So, can I help you out? Pastor Yella, yeah. you got to be able to hey, make sure that you got a, you are equipping your word because you're gonna have some baths in your life. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have some baby lambs coming in there. Mm. But, the, but, but, but one thing about being a shepherd is you gotta make sure you have you are equipped what you need to have, and you need to have a staff. Well, uh -huh. my God. Uh-huh. Now y'all don't know what uh-huh. Take your time, sir. Y'all got to know what it says. A rod and a staff. Uh -huh. See what happens is they got the loop on the end. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then they got the end that has a little pointy. Come on now. And when the when the bass get out of line and yeah. they're not yeah. following you, you got to grab them. Come on, man. Come on, man. But you got to be able to love Christ uh -huh. to be able uh -huh. yes. to help the wandering land. That's it. Oh my God. That's because it. when they're young, they're going to, as they're grazing through the fields of life, they're going to go wander off. Uh-huh. Jesus. Uh-huh. They're going to come in as a crackhead. Mm -hmm. Well. And when they come in as a crackhead, they still bathe after they confess. Yes. But they still got that propensity. Mm -hmm. Yes. That habit. Yes. That desire. Uh -huh. Yes. And what happens is you got to love them until they are full range. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. You got to love the disease out of them. Yes. So he asked the question, Peter, do you love me? Yes. Because, you know, I'm a, I'm a, can I be real with you? Been yeah. out here for seven years now. Yes. I love my congregation. But some of them Negroes get on my nerves. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. <laughs> Some of them I wish I could give the left hand of fellowship too. Uh -huh. But I got to love all of them. Yeah. That's right. Can I have that? You got to love all of them. All of them. You can't have no favorites right. being a pastor. Because mm. if you got favorites, then guess what? You're not a pastor. Wow. You, you got a club. Uh oh. Wow. You can't have no favorites. Uh -huh. That's why I couldn't pastor my home church. Because you're too connected to them. Because when you know folks when they're growing up, they know you as just a little kid. Yes. But you know them as mom and aunties. And then when you grow up with them, that's why I say, Lord, don't, I don't want a pastor where I grew up at. Uh, yes. But I want a pastor where I don't know nobody. Yes. Because it's easier for me to discipline. Yes. Because familiarity breeds content. Yes. And I didn't want to do that. Uh, so when you start shepherding the folks, you're going to get the folks that's going to wander off because of their habits. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the folks that's going to wander off because of their craziness, but you got to love Christ enough to know, so guess what? I will leave, leave the 99 and go get that one. Yes. But just one thing about a lamb that you have to do, whenever a lamb strays, it finds itself stuck in some thorns and thistles. Yes. Yes. But you as the shepherd need to do one thing. You got to always make sure you got your oil with you. Yes. You got to make sure you got your oil. reason why a shepherd needs to have a rod is the one to pull, and another one is to pull them to keep them moving. Oh. But then you need to have your oil with them. Because when the lambs go astray, guess what the oil does? The oil is the oil, is the oil that is the thing that's a healing process. Oh. Because when they get stuck in those thistles of life, when they get stuck in some issues, Yes. When they get stuck, you got to pull them out. Yeah. And be able to pour oil on top of them. Yeah. The oil heals them, but not only does the oil heal, what happens? It keeps the fleas off of them. Yeah. Oh, no. Yes. Wow. It does. And it keeps the neck because what happens is, have you ever seen a lamb keep busting?
his head. They thought, that's a dumb sheep. The sheep ain't dumb. What happened was, fleas got in his ear yeah. because the shepherd didn't put no oil in it. Ah. And the oil is to protect them from the fleas. It is a propellant for them to keep the fleas off of them. Your job as the pastor is to anoint your sheep. So you can keep the naysayers out of their ears. Anoint them. Because when the fleas get in, they're going to bust their head into the brick. Because the fleas are now eating at their brain. And when it's eating at their brain, it's causing them to act different. And your job as a pastor is to love them and protect them and put oil on them. So they don't have to keep beating their head. And you got to keep getting them out of the situation. Wow. The oil. Is to protect them. Yes, it is. The oil. That's why he said, Peter, do you love me? Ah. Ah. See, you too, you saw he, he confirmed it a second time. He said, now feed my sheep. Because when you get that eel and then you get that ram, you ain't gonna like that ram when you get older. Mm. Because there's something about a ram. They real back. Uh -huh. Because they get stung. But guess what? When you this pastor, uh -huh. when you the shepherd, they hear your voice. They stand at attention. See, yeah. Ah, yeah. Come on. When you are a pastor of a church, I don't care whoever you're pastor. Whenever they got fleas on them, you better make sure you got that oil. Yeah. Now I'm not talking about just no regular oil, but I'm talking about the oil that when you speak, that your words are anointed to protect them yeah. and keep them. Yeah. Yes. I'm talking about that you got to have that anointing that yeah. when you stand flat-footed in New Jersey but have evidence in Florida, I'm oh. talking about being able oh. to be anointed to be able to say, even though you over there, yes. I'm going to send a word of authority over there. Yes. Because you got to be like Jesus yes. when you're doing this thing. Uh, you can't be like no ordinary person. People got to be able to see the oil on your life. You say, I need you to speak a word that's going to touch me over here. If you don't believe me, that word's coming. The Roman soldier came to Jesus. Bishop, he came to Jesus. And guess what he said? He said, I know you are a man of authority. Yes. Now the question is, where did this Roman soldier see Jesus working? No. Uh -huh. Because he said, I don't need you to come to my house. Because I'm a man of authority. And because I know that you're a man of authority, you ain't got to come up under my roof. But all I need you to do is to speak the word. And say, all you got to do is stand flat footed and preach the word. Because you want to affect the people of Michigan. Because of the anointing that's going to come out of your life. You better be able to be anointed. Even when you get the gnats in your people's ears and say, well, he all the way out here. How you going to come up here? You better pray the gnats off of them. Because of the word. Y'all gotta catch up with me now. But see what happens is uh, when the Roman soldier came to Jesus and he said, I don't need you to come and speak the word. Because when you speak the word, I know that your words will carry all the way over to my house yeah. and begin to do the work that I needed to do. Because guess why? You are part of a kingdom. Yeah. Oh, my God from Zion. Oh, yeah. That's why Jesus said, Do you love me? Because you're about to be a part of a kingdom that removes. Be able to get the word of God done. Because the Lord. 
beginning to build the temple. He said, as long as you do my judgment, you honor my creed, I will be with you. And when you are with him, he said, I will love you. I will keep you. I love about Jesus. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord. I love you. He said, feed my sheep. How you feed your sheep? You better get in this word. This word is the recipe for people's healing. This word is the recipe for people's deliverance. You're gonna have some people gonna come here. Their minds are gonna be screwed up. Their hearts are gonna be hurt. Their body is gonna be wrapped up. And you better be preaching that bubble of message. But you better preach a message that will put the devil on the run. You better preach a message that will get the hell out of folks. You better preach a message that's gonna put the devil on the run. You better preach until the times get better. Preach until great gates begin to shut You better preach until earthquakes start happening. Because in the winter earthquake, there's a kingdom about to come down. Feed your recipe. He says you got power. 